on newer Canon cameras such as the R5, R6, R3, R7 and so on, you do not only have the normal RAW image format, but also the so-called compressed RAW, short C RAW. And I've been wondering a couple of times and some people have also asked me, is there really a downside of the C RAW or is it, should, I, should you just use this? And in this video, I want to talk a bit about the advantages of Zero, about my fears that I had of when using Zero. And most importantly, I did some tests with different ISO, both under and overexposed, so really different situations to see really if there is a difference in Zero and RAW. And yeah, I want to share with you also my conclusion, what I will do from now on forwards. And yeah, I need to say, actually this test changed a bit my mind. Before we have a look at the results, let me quickly explain to you what C-RAW is. So C-RAW stands for compressed RAW and it's important to note that it's a lossy compression, meaning you actually lose some kind of information. And this of course comes with some advantages, otherwise nobody would do it. And the main advantage is the file size. Um, it's effectively cut into half, so this means on one memory card instead of let's say 1000 pictures you now can take 2000 pictures which might might be really great on longer shootings um, also not unimportant when you go home import the files on your computer or like your um, external ssd you now also fit twice the pictures which i need to say for me was not the biggest deal because i tend to delete most of my pictures anyway so even though i shoot more than 50000 pictures a year in the end I think I keep around 2000 or so maybe so that's not the main concern however I need to say if I'm really on a trip let's say I'm going for one week to another country it can happen that I end up with 12 13,000 images and of course for this short moment it's nice if my SSD is not over floating with images what's more important at least for my type of shooting is that actually the buffer of the camera is bigger if you shoot in zero we can see this in the manual, for example, of the Canon R5, that in zero they are saying you have up to 260 images that you can write on the CF Express, whereas on the normal RAW it's only 180 images. This does actually not sound too bad, and you might think 180 images is still more than enough. And in most cases, I would completely agree with you. Um, but there are some things. First of all, there are always exceptions where there is action over a longer period. Uh, second of all, if you read the small print at the bottom, you will see that these tests are conducted under 100 ISO and I'm ne almost never shooting, shooting birds at 100 ISO and never shooting birds uh, in flight at 100 ISO. And as soon as you dial up the ISO to let's say 1600, the image size also gets considerably bigger, meaning that the buffer is reduced. Also, if I shoot birds in flight, I tend to use the electronic shutter just for having the higher frame rate, so you have 20 frames a second. And then, at least for my tests, the buffer is also not lasting nearly as long as with the mechanical shutter. So that all sounds great, but I was still a bit skeptical and afraid of losing image quality, so I did some tests and you can see the test set up here. Basically, I mounted my camera on a tripod and I used this pillow as the main subject and the plant behind as a background, which is a dark background, which is always a bit more challenging for the camera. You can see here how the original image looks like. This was shot at 400 ISO. You can see the exposure is more or less fine. And what I then did is edited the images a tiny bit. So I made them a bit brighter, especially the dark tones in the background to see the differences a bit more. And of course, zooming in to 100%. And I need to say I don't see much of a difference between these two pictures or honestly I see no, no big difference at all between these two pictures. On the left you have the raw image, on the right there is the C raw and everything looks basically the same. There is a lot of details on the cushion itself, on these hairs and also so, uh, the transitions in the background of the leaves, they look quite smooth on both pictures so here no problem. But what if you underexpose the image, either because you screw up the exposure, let's be honest, this can happen, 
Or also like if you take pictures, for example, of the merganser, that is a bird that contains quite some black and white, and I always find it kind of difficult to shoot in terms of dynamic range. And here we can also have a closer look and an image that I still took with 400 ISO, but now with 320 of a second, so two stops darker, and then I push the exposure in post. And if again we zoom in one to one, I would say we see no difference or almost none. I'm not never sure. <laughs> Every time I look at the picture, I'm like thinking something slightly else. So sometimes I think they're exactly the same. Sometimes I think the zero might be a little bit less smooth, but I'm really having a hard time. And I think in the blind test, I would not see the difference. So let's move to the opposite. I took the picture a bit too bright, only one stop too bright. So now I darkened it in post and I want to focus a bit more on these bright areas of the ear of whatever animal this is. And here really, I really don't see a difference. And I even took the highlights a bit more back in post afterwards to really compare. And even when doing this, there was basically no difference. I mean, both images were really resolving a lot of this dynamic range. So this was all done with 400 ISO, so still under quite bright situations. How does it look like if we push them a bit more? So let's say 3200 ISO. Well, that's what I did in this picture. And again, zooming in, we don't see that much of a difference. I'm still wondering if it might be a tiny bit smoother on the left on the raw, especially look, if you look at the really dark regions. But this is really a pixel peeping at, ex at the most extreme at this point. And again, since noise is a kind of a random pattern, I'm not sure if this is really representative here. So let's skip to a more extreme example where I underexposed, but this time with 3200 ISO. And of course we see the noise is getting terrible because it's basically 12,800 ISO. Um, but for me, they look more or less equally terrible. I don't see a big difference here. And I will try to put a link down below, like a Dropbox folder or something, where you can have a look at these images, some screenshots at least, because I think that the YouTube compression algorithm might not really help to see the, these fine details. Let's move to the last picture. Again, 3200 ISO, but this time a bit overexposed. Of course, the noise is now way better. And in the bright areas, I still think we see more or less the same amount of details in both pictures. So I really think the zero was holding up pretty well. So that's it for the testing. Um, what will I change? Will I switch to zero for bird photography? Actually, yes, I already did because for me, the uh, advantages are just outweighing the potential tiny disadvantages that I actually don't really see in practice. So all these tests were done with the electronic shutter mode since I use this for over 95% of my bird images. And you might now say, ah, but wait, with the electronic shutter, we're only getting 12 bit files. And this is true. So what I did now was taking another day, a few more tests with 14 bit files, meaning the mechanical shutter and not in the high speed mode. And I just took a high dynamic range scene again. I zoomed in at 100%, compared everything, and basically I found the same. There was almost no difference. I'm not 100% sure whether if in the darkest areas after pushing the exposure by one stop plus the, the shadows to 100%, if there was a tiny bit of difference in the noise pattern, but really for me, almost neglectable. And still, I think for landscape photography, buffer size is never an issue. We're not shooting thousands of pictures one on one day. So I think for landscape photography, I will still stick to raw just because landscape pictures are, first of all, we have this 14 bits, so potentially a bit more information. And second of all, these are usually the images I edit a bit more, not the ones I take in the middle of the afternoon with a blue sky, but during sunrise, sunset, um, when there is some backlit and there is really some shadows I want to push a bit in, in post because the camera just does not represent what I see. And I think there is, this is the situation where I would expect that the zero could fall a bit more apart. And as I said, since I'm not taking so many of these pictures, I there is basically also no disadvantage of using it. 
And what I really like here is the custom shooting modes of the Canon. So you have this with basically every camera. And you can just select here that, um, for example, C1 and C2 I set for bird photography. And I always use C3 more for landscapes because it has completely different settings the way I set it up. So what I just changed now is uh, I kept C3 at RAW and C1 and C2 I put to zero. So I hope like this I really have the best for every shooting situation. I hope this video was helpful for you. If yes, it would be great if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.